Hey besties, it's Nat, back with another Animal Crossing speed build. And today is a special day because as you can see, we are on a beach. And that means that I am starting my beach decorating series, aka Beach Decorating 101 in which I slowly but surely populate the beaches of my island. So if you saw my last video where I did my, not gonna lie, kind of incredible lighthouse view, link in the card besties, you'll know that this long skinny beach area, it's almost like a sandbar kind of, is opposite my lighthouse view. In between it is like a bay, hence the boats as you can see. And you walk around the back of my lighthouse in order to reach it. Uh, I intended for this to be sort of like a campsite area, like you come here for the day and you hang out on the beach and you experience the nature and everything. Uh, one thing you may also notice is that behind me is Maddie's house. Now, unfortunately, decorating this area the way that I want to decorate it involves destroying Maddie's beautiful, gorgeous private island, link in the card as well, besties. Uh, so unfortunately, we will be saying goodbye to that build. Uh, here's like a little clip show of it for you to enjoy. You can bask in the greatness of Maddie's private island one last time. We will be moving her house, but I have a plan for Maddie's house and it's gonna be very cute. So be on the lookout for that, besties. Other areas we'll be renovating include this really awkward, long, skinny portion, as well as this cute little rock where I had this marine biology setup going on. Trust me, in the past, it was very cute. But I have a cuter idea of what to put here and we'll get into that in just a second. But first, why not do a little bit of research. In my last video, we did research on someone else's island, so I thought in this video we did research on my island. Here are my former beach areas I've already decorated. This first one focuses a lot on like the man-made elements, like the picnic going on, and then this one, the Muscle Beach, has more of the natural elements, like the, the driftwood and all of the, the seagrass and everything growing. I'll make sure to include both of those videos in the playlist that I make for this series so you can check those out if you're interested. But moving on from that, I decided for this video to make these little item clusters to show you the items that I'm going to be using. This cluster has more of the natural themed items, so of course we have stuff like the light green wheatgrass, the sand castle, the wave breaker. I've also included the light wood coloration of the log stakes because it reminds me of driftwood uh, as well as the stone stool and this fossil that sort of looks like a stone along with the seaweed that you can get while diving and of course some weeds as well uh, and i just wanted to include these natural items to sort of show items that you can get outside of the furniture catalog that might be helpful when decorating a beach to make it look really like realistic and natural. I keep saying the word natural, but like that's the vibe. So like what else am I supposed to say? Here are some of the more man-made objects I'll be including in the build, obviously because my island is very natural themed already. These items aren't particularly flashy or big or anything. That is a totally cool and valid way to decorate your beach, but that's not the vibe that we're going with today. Uh, an item that I really want to use is the kids tent to sort of emphasize that camping theme from the previous build. We also have the glass bottles, which remind me a lot of sea glass. We have the book from Harv's Island. We have a little purse that could be like for your lunch. I also wanted to include a lot of fishing items. And in this layout, I gravitated towards a yellow, blue, and green color scheme, but eventually that yellow is replaced with orange, which you'll see in the final build. Finally, we have our gorgeous custom designs. First is the lifeguard sign, which I actually ended up not using in this build for the colors, but I use it in my other beach builds and I think it's quite cute. My other beach essentials are the life preserver rope, the seagull shadows, the puddles, which we'll make ample use of in the fishing area, and of course, these wooden planks. They remind me so much of the beach near my Nana's house, and I feel like they create the perfect illusion of like walking through a marsh or a bog, and we're gonna utilize them in a similar way in this build. I will also say another great use of custom designs on sand is using water path codes. From the Veils on Instagram has some particularly great examples of this, but I'm sticking with these because these are the codes that I have space for. But if you do have the code space, highly recommend their Instagram page for natural beach inspiration. Okay, now we can start the build. Of course, we're starting off by moving Maddie's house. Once again, rip Maddie's island. You were cute while you lasted. That's one of those things on my island where I'm like, I know I'm not gonna end up keeping this. There's gonna be something that gets in the way of it. And I was right, so here we are. Anyways, I hope that you liked that little intro where I sort of went over the items I was using. I thought for a series that is all about like in build inspiration, 
it made sense for me to be more thorough and explain the items that I was using. Uh, here we are dismantling Maddie's little beach picnic. I'm actually gonna move this slightly up the beach because I really like the way that it looks and it matches the color scheme that I'm going for. So we're scooching it up, we're scooching it up slightly. We're gonna add some more wheat fields. We're gonna add those wave breakers that I mentioned in the beginning. And that is the, how we're gonna approach this area. Essentially the way that I've been approaching all of my beaches so far is sectioning them off. And I'm fortunate because some of my beaches just happen to be really small. So it's easy to say like, hey, this beach is just for a picnic. Or for example, with the volleyball court, uh, I extended the idea that I had on the beach onto land. So we have the muscle beach with the weights and then it extends into the volleyball court. So they have like the same theme of those areas. That is essentially like my mindset going into a beach is like, what is the purpose of this beach? Is it meant to just be natural and be a beach? Cause this area at the, f at the, the, at the bottom, which is closest to the, to the river mouth, this area is meant to be mostly undisturbed. And then we have the picnic sort of in the middle of it. Like, oh, someone brought their picnic here and is eating it. Uh, that's essentially the mindset. And then as you go farther up the beach, the picnic gets a little more complicated. You have the tent, you have like the, we're gonna have a, an outdoor oven set up. And then directly behind it, we have the fishing area, which sort of brings it back down to earth a little bit. We have like lots of rocks and seaweed and all of those things which you'll see later on, of course, but uh, that, that's essentially like my mental process. When I, when I started this build, I knew I wanted to have the picnic and then everything sort of developed from there. This super skinny area above me is where I put the path leading to the picnic with those wooden planks that I mentioned in the previous part of the video. When I tell you those wooden planks look so good. If you have any sort of natural theme to your island and you're trying to decorate your beaches, I'm going to need you to run, not walk besties, to download that code because it just looks phenomenal. Uh, one of the reasons I was struggling so much with this area is partially because of the size of it, uh, but also because I wanted it to look like the most natural of any of the areas that I'm working on today. And because of that, I really wanted the objects to be like offset from each other. Like the natural objects in particular, like the wheat fields, oh my God, you gotta offset your wheat fields besties. Like it, it obviously, when you're, when you're concentrating them and making like a super thick area of them, they're gonna be just like in straight lines. But uh, in order to make them look like blend in with the nature, I guess, I try to experiment with offsetting them on half tiles, mixing them in with other items, like the log stakes in with rocks, and just try to make sure that they're not symmetrical. Uh, honestly, same thing goes for this picnic blanket. I wanted it to sort of be like strewn about and look kind of messy because of course like a person just came together and like threw this together, you know, it's not like set in stone the way that a structure like a building on the beach might be. So that was sort of like my, <laughs> that's what I was struggling with the most with this area. I wanted everything to be offset. I wanted the, the wave breakers to be offset, the, the wheat, everything. As you can see, I'm starting to get kind of frustrated with this area. So in a second, I'm actually gonna take a break and do CJ's Sea Sports Challenge besties like I did in the last video when I got frustrated. CJ's just so cute. Anyways, here's a quick plug for my City Folk fishing tourney stream happening this Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come see it, besties. Oh yeah, also Marshall got sick and it was really cute and I was just really enjoying his suffering and I thought that you would too. Uh, but we'll get back to the video in a second. And we're back. Uh, I've placed down those wooden planks, as you can see. I feel like the way that I'm talking in this video is like really authoritative and it's like not my normal speed. But like, look at me offsetting those uh, wheat fields. You know, they can, you can place them on the edges like that. Very convenient for making them look more natural. Anyways, I feel very like authoritative in this video. I wanna make it very clear that any of the advice that I give in this video is just that. It's just advice. It's just like what I've been doing, the methods that I've been doing to decorate my beaches. Uh, absolutely do not feel obligated to, or like think that I don't like beaches that look differently than this. On the contrary, I love when people do creative things with their beaches. I frankly think that the things that I'm doing are not the most creative just because it's like, this is the way that a beach looks in real life. You know, people people put whole buildings on their beaches. People make like fish markets and, and carnivals and all this crazy stuff. So, you know, my other advice, <laughs> my main advice is just to check out social media. I know that you can definitely get like Animal Crossing FOMO from looking too much at social media and other people's islands, but in small doses, it can be very helpful and inspiring. And uh, as you all know, I love to steal. So that's why <laughs> that's why all of my videos constantly have like links to this person or to that person, because I'd be looking besties. I'm looking respectfully. 
of course, as always. Uh, but yeah, I, I struggled with the layout of this area a lot and I kept like leaving and coming back to it. But that's my other tip is just struggle, struggle a little bit and then and maybe go fishing and you'll feel better. But, you know, I was just, I was trying to make sure that everything was uh, in the exact spot that I wanted it to be. I wanted to make sure the height of everything was good. I thought about placing a wheat field in front of that cushion, which later turns into a beach blanket. Ooh, we're working on this area again. Okay, see, I'm placing down the stone stool. I'm gonna place down some of the log stakes. All of the, the wheat fields are sort of offset from one another. I also have a break in the path where I put a little weed to sort of separate a little bit because one long path of wood planks would be like too much. It would be too thick. And I like how the, it breaks up the white with the green and sort of adds a little bit of variety. Um, I also tried to experiment with color on this beach. Like I said, I ended up going with a blue, green, and orange color scheme though it's mostly blue and green and the beige of the sand but i ended up using the navy blue or it's called the black kids tent but it's definitely navy blue uh instead of the white one because i just felt like the contrast is really good there's another there's another pro tip besties pay attention to the colors because obviously on the beach you have the sand and the sand reacts really differently with the colors of objects than the grass does it's like how when your town when it's winter and all of a sudden your town looks way worse even though when it's all the other seasons decorated way better it's because of the the snow and it's messing with like the color scheme of your island so in this instance i ended up gravitating towards the darker tent as opposed to the white one because i wanted to have more contrast and have the items pop out more same idea with breaking up the wooden plank path with the weed Something else you may have noticed is that I ended up going with like a really strict color scheme for this build. Uh, and that's just because like the space is so small and I thought that it, it would be kind of busy if I added more colors into it. So I ended up sticking heavily with the blue with pops of green and then the beiges and the whites and grays just to keep it very easy on the eyes, I guess. Uh, but once again, that's absolutely just a me preference, especially if you're doing like a realistic beach. It can be fun to have like bright pops of color because, you know, that's how people visit the beach. Oh, yes, this is what I was talking about before. I wanted to put a wheat field there because of the height of it. And especially because we're in, when you're on the other side of the river mouth, you can see into this area. And I wasn't sure how much I wanted the picnic to be obscured. But at the end of the day, like because that area, you might be taking pictures in it uh, if i had a wheat field in front of it you wouldn't be able to see your character so uh as you can see i replaced the the pillow with this beach towel that is matching with the blanket that i put underneath it to make it look invisible it's not like perfectly matched up but it, i think it looks cute and i'm gonna keep adjusting this area and moving things around just so that it's like more traversable because once again i once you're visiting my dreamer desk, I want you guys to be able to walk around and get places. And I also want to be able to walk around when I'm playing on my island. Even though, you know, I want to find a balance between like, she's, she's a cute island, she's got lots of decoration, but also I do want to be able to walk places. Once again, just a preference, absolutely no shade to highly decorated islands. I just really love to fish, okay, besties? I'm a, I, I've gone fishing, as we've discussed. I love to fish. I'm a fisherman at heart the hyper masculine side of me is just popping out in animal crossing i can't help it it's just me besties Ooh, and now we're back to working on the campsite area as you can see i ended up just going with one tent because it's just, just no room for two tents in this space it's just too small uh there is the little kitchen also really wanted to use this log great throwback to my previous beach that i showed you at the beginning of the video just wanted to have you know a little a little log you can sit by the beach and look out over the water uh, i tried to fit in this little cart as well because it's super cute but it just it was too big like i needed to pare down the space and we're going to move that cooler uh, up to the fishing area i ended up going with the smaller cooler instead of the big one that you get from cj this space is very tiny and <laughs> same with the blanket i had to switch out to the smaller blanket because it just didn't fit but that's okay because i like how it turned out i was just adjusting it to see how it looked if i moved it a little bit up to match the kids tent uh, and something fun that i did as well was i ended up putting a clothes drying rack behind it to sort of add some height to the area and separate it from the rocks behind it but also I think that including clothing related objects in a beach build is really smart because it sort of implies like, oh, you went swimming and then your clothes got wet or like you took off your shoes and socks to, you know, walk around on the sand. I think that that's like a really great little piece of storytelling that you can do on the beach. Honestly, I feel like that's always my biggest build tip is just use unexpected items. Use items that aren't in the furniture catalog. Use like the raffle items. I'm always hyping the raffle items. Use 
creatures that you've caught. I love using the seaweed. You guys know how I love the seaweed. Use custom designs, use weeds, use clothing, use all of those things. Use the bags, the little bags they added with the update, the 2.0 update, like the purses you can hold. I included one of those at the beginning of this video for a reason, because I knew I wanted to use it in this build. Okay, here's a controversial design choice that I chose to make. So I put this wheat field there originally, and I really like having the wheat field there. Uh, I like the height that it adds. I like that it brings some like natural elements back into this area, but it ended up replacing it with a bottle crate with a radio on top of it because I really wanted there to be music in this area too because there's music down at the front of the beach but not up here and I wanted there to be more. Um, I also, there is a spot next to the fishing area where I could add a record player but instead I put the cooler there so part of me wants to put that wheat field back just to add in the natural element again because when I look at it it feels just like a little bit unbalanced that like all of a sudden there's no nature and it's just man-made objects so if anything about this build changes, it will likely be that I replace those objects. If that makes any sense with the way I've described it at all. I just wanted to like, explain like my process. <laughs> That's what this video is about, explaining my process. Anyways, as you can see, speaking of my process and speaking of man-made objects, we have some litter on the beach besties. Now, don't go littering on the beach in real life. If you litter, I am not a fan of you. You cannot watch this channel. You have to leave right now. Anyways, as we all know, the bag of chips, very overpowered item. I thought it would be cute. It matches the color scheme and it has a little bit of realism. People who do like city core islands or like more like grungy islands and they have a lot of like garbage around love that aesthetic it's like you know it makes it feel like lived in garbage everyone loves a little garbage <laughs> Anyways, we are moving on to the fishing area on the rocks. I thought this is a perfect place to have a fishing area, besties. I thought about putting something like bigger here, like like a movie screen and have like cars and every. No, no, no. We're not doing that right now. That's a cute idea though. Keep that in the back pocket of your mind. But no, we're just doing a fishing area, very classic. I wanted to have the life preserver off to the left. We have the little rope leading to it very essential obviously that object is great but the rope adds a lot of character i also added the little sign pointing to the fishing spot uh instead of the you know what let's say in lieu of in lieu of the no lifeguard sign because the red was really clashing with the orange you see what i mean besties i also once again tried to incorporate the orange with the bicycle uh with the brown bicycle but it was just too much color wise so i switched the brown bicycle to a blue one and then i added a fishing rod that had some orange in it it's the one with the duck it's of course it's the one with the duck obviously can't go wrong with a good duck there's a beach object for y'all the decoy duck did you know that i just learned that recipe literally yesterday I was borrowing other people's decoys duck for two years and the game finally granted it to me. I'm so grateful. Uh, you guys also know that, um, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't mention this in the intro. Fun fact, uh, in the video before this, my gorgeous and stunning lighthouse build, I hosted a premiere for it because the build was so long and I'd worked so hard on it. So I wanted to like do a live premiere. But the problem was that I was so tired from finishing the build to get it out on time because it was already running late that I, <laughs> I fell asleep during my own premiere. So shout out to me for falling asleep during my own premiere. That's very iconic of me, actually. I experimented with that pile of clothes because of, once again, trying to fit the clothing theme of like, you went swimming, so you changed your clothes. But it was just a little too neat and tidy for me. So I replaced it with the water bottle and I think that looks really nice. And there we are with our little fishing rod. And of course we threw down a ton of seaweed. Once again, seaweed, that's another huge beach decorating tip I have for y'all besties. Um, I'm actually gonna expand this uh this water area a little bit to throw in a couple of more wheat fields to sort of balance out the levels a little bit add a little bit more nature back into this area same vibe with adding seaweed or adding rocks or adding fossils i also threw some seaweed down on that path as you can see the, oh i was trying to i was trying to plant weeds around i ended up being able to fit one right there but i was just experimenting with like where i could put them once again my compulsion to have items be offset was keeping me from uh, planting the weeds where I wanted them to go, but that's okay. I'm gonna throw back down the bike because I went to go, I had to go to Harv's Island a couple times during this. Honestly, probably the most time consuming aspect of this build. <laughs> like, not gonna lie. And I think I'm gonna end up moving the bike anyway because I'm gonna throw down, uh, once again, our final code for the video, the gorgeous and stunning puddle that I absolutely love. We're gonna do one here and then we're gonna do one underneath a pile of seaweed. Uh, this, this pile of seaweed to be exact. And once again, you know, these objects don't look bad on their own, but adding a little custom design to them sort of just adds a little bit more life and, and makes it, you know, makes it a little more exciting. Uh, this was my final attempt at adding uh, 
uh, a wheat field over there. We'll see if I add one in the future, but this is me checking over the build. I tried to steal a wheat field. Did I add another one? Ooh, this is my last thing that I did. Um, like I said earlier, I tried to add a wheat field at the front of this area to balance it out a little bit, uh, but I didn't want to block the view, so I ended up adding a wheat field on the side to balance it out a little bit, and I think that that looks really cute. But we are almost done. Yeah, I'm gonna take off my stupid hard hat, and we are going to go to the outro. Ooh, and I think a butterfly is gonna come by. Where is he, where is he? There he is, so cute. And here we are. Once again, thank you all so, so much for watching. I am so excited to finally be getting this beach series off the ground. I've been doing little tidbits of beach decorating over the past couple of months, but it's finally gonna hit the ground running, besties. Like I said earlier, there will be a playlist where I house all of the beach related videos and you'll be able to find that on my channel and also probably linked in the description as well or in the card or wherever. Once again, the whole point of this series is inspiration. And obviously I have a very specific theme to my island being sort of a natural, New England inspired theme. Uh, so I have some ideas in my head of how I want to decorate my beaches, but if you have any specific topics or themes or ideas that you want me to cover on this series, please let me know in the comments. I think it's super interesting how beach decorating is sort of like a mutual frustration in the community. And I feel you besties. The thing that I like the most about this is that we all get to struggle together. And even though it's a mutual struggle, much like Marshall being sick, it's also something that we can all enjoy together. So. I really hope to achieve that with this series, and I also hope to see you along the ride with me. All that being said, if you liked the video, please leave a like. It really helps me with the algorithm. And if you really liked it and want to see more videos like this, feel free to hit that little subscribe button down there, as well as the bell to be notified every time that I post or go live over here on YouTube, which I do once a week. I post Animal Crossing content on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Today is an exception, but you know, it's whatever. Uh, and yeah, I hope to see you all again soon particularly at my city folk stream this weekend, which I know is gonna be a blast. Uh, so thank you all again for watching and I'll see you all again on Wednesday. Bye.